What's going on growers? It's James Pigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Today, I want to share with you something I would never grow again. Planting it was a complete mistake. Also, I want to show you how the gardens are growing and what I'm still harvesting. Let's go. Before I take you over to the plant that I would never grow again, I wanted to show you some of the stuff that's doing real well in this bed. This cauliflower just started heading up. So you can see it's forming the head, it's looking excellent. I've got another one right on the other side that looks really good too. Tuck looks like he's wanting to get a taste of one of those. And we've got the peppers that are still producing real well right here. So we're harvesting these. And then the green beans are doing excellent also. Still flowering because we're continuing to pick them. But we've got a bunch at the bottom. We're still snacking on because we love eating these. And more ones over here. I want to take you to this next bed too where we have some more cauliflower things that are heading up also some broccoli that look like they're just about to start heading up too, start forming we've got kale here and here's some nice little baby heads of the cauliflowers another one here too so i grew cauliflower in the spring but if you guys remember it started to like flower a bit early and that's what happens when it starts to get too hot and they don't have enough time so around here growing cauliflower in the fall just makes so much more sense because it just as they start to head it's nice and cool so they don't just separate and start to flower let me take you over to that plant though the one i would never ever grow again and one that i suggest you don't either it's right in the chicken coop i'll take you over there now and as we head over there we'll uh check out these tomatoes and it looks like Tuck actually found himself a pepper that he harvested. So he grabbed the green one but again he went back to that Creole de Cocina. That must be his favorite one. I assume he just ripped it off the plant when, when I wasn't even paying attention. So we're still getting a bunch of these cherry tomatoes here that are doing real well. And you'll notice a lot of the shiso as I go through the area. I love just letting this grow on its own, but it's starting to flower. So I'm trying to make sure I let the flowers stay as long as they can because the bees love getting this because there's not that many flowers at this time of the year. So the bees really enjoy, you know, snacking on it. But I have to make sure that I pull it out before it goes to seed or it's just gonna spread throughout the whole garden like crazy. So there's some bees working. And then some of the cherry tomatoes that have come up on their own, I let those stay just for a little while just because the bees like those too. So back here, is the plant that I would never grow again. Look at this thing. This is from one plant. All of this, it's, a, it's in the cucumber family. Well, it's actually in the melon family. Look how much it's just taken over everything. I planted a number of different kind of cucumbers here and this thing just, it just took everything over. And as I take you through, it's got almost little to no fruit. And I planted this in the early spring. Another thing about this plant is it's so spiky, not only just the fruit is spiky, because this is the African horn melon. I'll show you some of the fruit in other sections, but the vines are so spiky too. And it's not your common spikes that are on most of your cucumber plants. It's actually like almost more like a cactus. Like when you touch it with your hands, it like sticks to your hands. So it's just like not ideal to grow at all. I'm all suited up, ready to harvest some of the Kiwano African horn melons. And I got all this gear on as you can see, because these things are spiky. So I'm obviously joking just a little bit with the visor and everything, but when it comes down to it, it's just so spiky these things. And you really need like some kind of long sleeves to harvest them for when you're reaching through. Tuck still seems to want to try to find some and eat some. But the whole plant is just so spiky. When they're fully ripe, they're supposed to be yellow. So this one's getting close, closer to ripe right here. But I wouldn't plant this thing for a number of reasons. Actually, this one's stuck into the fence. We'll move up to another one. So here's one that's getting closer. I've tried them when they're at this green stage like this, and they taste similar to a cucumber, just not as good. And I've read that when they become fully ripe, they get like a little more sour and that they have a little bit of a different taste. But this is the thing. I have a 180 day growing season. We're getting closer to the frost, like less than a month away of the first expected frost. They're not even ripe yet. I planted these things in early spring. Look at the size of this vine back here. Look at that. So this thing has been growing all spring long. It's completely covered the fence. It overgrew all my other cucumbers and just made it so that like none of them could actually even grow around it. So it's relatively annoying in that sense. And again, I can't find too many great things about it. Maybe it would work really good if you grew it in like a gorilla garden and just planted it and then came back so that you can harvest it because I don't think any of the critters or deer or anything would want to eat this. So we're going to cut it open. It looks unique when you actually cut it open. It's cool looking. And again, it tastes very similar to a cucumber, but if I want to eat something that tastes like a cucumber, I'll just grow a cucumber. 
So when they ripe, it gets a little more greener on the inside. And people say that they like to juice them and stuff, but again, I'd rather just eat a regular cucumber and juice it. So it's definitely, definitely a unique thing to grow, and you could grow it for that reason, but it just takes over way too much space in my opinion. And I don't want to harvest anything or grow anything that I have to wear gloves and I have to put all gear on in order to harvest it. I'm very fortunate that I planted this in the corner of my garden and in sections that I don't usually go around because if you put this in the middle of your raised bed or something or an area and didn't trellis and had this growing along the ground, it would be such a hassle to move through. So that's another reason I would never grow it again. Let me cut it open. This Tuck's trying to eat one in the background. Tucky, I'll give you a piece of this. So it tastes so much like a cucumber, I'm sure Tuck's gonna like it. Let's see. No, he doesn't even want it. Hey, that's funny. You guys see how much Tuck loves eating cucumbers and he doesn't even want this thing. So I'll try a bite of it. Again, very similar to cucumber, but a little more sour. If you want that little bit of sourness to a cucumber, I highly suggest growing something like the lemon cucumber. Definitely a better choice in my opinion. It's not gonna take over all your plants. It's got an incredible flavor. Or even try something like the crystal apple cucumber. That one's unique. It's a little sweeter. They've got incredible flavors to them, but this one, it's just not it in my opinion. I took that suit off. Now let's go over to some regular cucumbers, grab some of those, which in my opinion, are, they're just so much better. And a lot of the things I'm saying, it's just, it's just again, what I think. So you may not believe the same things, but I think Tuck will let me know too that regular cucumbers are the way to go. So even one like this, they're so much better to snack on. Look at that, he's going right for it. So he'll let you know they're even sweeter than the other ones and better tasting. Just like I say, tuck approved. That other thing is not tuck approved. That's not what we like. We still have a lot of things growing. I've got peppers that are still producing under here, waiting for some of them to turn red. I've got my next round of lettuce planted, as you can see. We'll be harvesting those soon. Some zucchinis. You'll notice some of the zucchinis have powdery mildew. But another thing is my zucchinis, that the Italian ones, the Costata Romanesco, they have even less powdery mildew than some of the others. So variety selection is huge. So I think some countries do great at some things. For instance, the Japanese usually have some of the best cucumbers. So I like growing Japanese cucumber varieties a lot of times. And the Italians have that incredible squash variety. So using variety to our advantage and thinking about you know, some countries that do great at some things, I love incorporating that idea. Let me show you some other stuff in the raised beds that are still growing real well also. Right here, we've got this legume that is just on the cusp of being ready to harvest. So I can't wait to grab some of these. It's gonna be super exciting. We've got our eggplants that are still producing. We've got some peppers that are ready in there. We've got these uh, Swiss chard right here, a number of different varieties. Those Swiss chard are gonna grow excellent for us into the winter. They're extremely cold hardy. And we've got more Swiss chard here. We've also got one of the most cold hardy kales right here. This is the Ragged Jack or also known as red Russian kale. And we've got some more varieties of kale yield here, the Dino Lacinato, which is actually my favorite variety of kale. Then we have plenty of um, carrots right here in different stages. So some of these carrots over here are ready to harvest on the sides. We'll leave them and harvest them as it gets cooler. But we've got also another round of carrots setting up here and then a round even behind that. So we're always staggering things to increase those harvests. Behind me here, We've got some tomatoes that are still doing well. Most of my cherry tomatoes are the ones that are still producing. This year, the tomatoes didn't do as well later into the season. Some of the reason of that is because some of the winds we had, and I think just, you know, every year is a little different. That's just how it goes. But you'll notice some of these tomatoes, they're not like insanely tall because I did this technique where it's called lowering and leaning. So this tomato right here is actually growing from the whole other side. So what I did was I just lowered it down and as you can see, it's going right through there so that I didn't have to get as high in order to harvest it. So it lowered everything, which made it a lot easier to harvest. Still ripe, still ready, and still absolutely delicious to eat. And then below that, I've got some next rounds of kale and stuff planted, which will help me grow later into the season. Then, at this time of the year, I allow some of the pumpkins and stuff to just come through and take over the ground. So some of them are starting to produce. I've got some little pumpkins back here. So those will be cool. And then also, right here, we've got the Malabar spinach. So this Malabar spinach is so cool because in the beginning of the season, we had the regular spinach. And then as it starts to get too warm, all this regular spinach starts to bolt, so you can't grow it anymore. So instead of growing regular spinach, we grow Malabar spinach. Now when it starts to get too cool, the Malabar spinach will slow down and we'll plant regular spinach again. This way we always have them fresh greens to eat. And then we've got more eggplants here. 
So every season brings a different surprise and a different gift. We try to make sure we work with the seasons, not fight against them and, and use them to our advantage. Like I just mentioned, some squash varieties and some countries do better at different kinds of plants. And then Castato Romanesco, it's my favorite variety of squash. And that's the one I have growing right here. It's a new round of it. It doesn't have as much powdery mildew and it's already starting to produce. But what is really cool is this squash variety right here, this one squash plant has been growing since the early spring. It's trailing all along here. If we follow the vine all the way down to here, under here, back around, and then right back here, and it's still producing fruit. Look at that, we've got three squash on it. So I planted this thing in the spring and it's still pumping out squash. You'll notice it does have some powdery mildew. So it's not 100% completely resistant, but it's way more resistant than some of your other varieties. Like you'll see back here, this is that yellow golden squash and it's got a lot more powdery mildew. So what I do is come out a lot and cut those plants with the powdery mildew out. The best idea is to get rid of them as soon as possible. This way it just doesn't spread throughout to the other plants. Before I let you go, I wanted to show you just a few more things. Right here, we've got the peppers that are still doing excellent in these raised beds some ripe ones there, some orange ripe ones back there, and a bunch of these hot ripe ones too. And I've also got the persimmons that are starting to actually change color, which is always exciting. That means fall's definitely coming in the cold weather because the persimmon is our perennial that we harvest latest into the season. I'm gonna bring you over to and show those. And you can also see all the shiso growing here. Again, I'm gonna make sure I cut the shiso out before it actually seeds. This way it's just not spreading throughout the whole garden and taking over any more than it already has. So look at these persimmons over here. And I just get so excited once they start to change color. You can see the hint of orange that we're starting to get in them. So cool. And these things have a good amount of fruit on them this year, which is definitely exciting to see. Some nice sets here. And also the echinaceas are, are seeding. So we're gonna let these self seed and just fall to the ground everywhere, continue to spread. And something cool about this is the New Jersey state bird, the uh, Eastern goldfinch, loves coming over and snacking on these. I had a couple shots of it just grabbing them. So it's cool to be able to provide food, not only for the bird, the bees, but also the birds and to bring our state bird in just to see it. So let me take you over to the grapes because we have some Catawba grapes that are ripe and ready to eat. As I move through this sea of shiso, there's so many bees on them, but they're not even bothering me. They're too busy having fun. I wanna show you some of these Catawba grapes right here. You can see we've got some nice sets and some of these are so ripe, so perfect. I'll just pick a couple here. So I'm gonna grab all these today because with the weather cooling, it's definitely the time to harvest them. These are a delicious grape to just eat fresh. The slip skin, so they do have the seed in them too, but man, they're so good. Such a sweet, sweet flavor. That's not the only thing that we actually have ready fruit and ripe to eat. Let me bring you over to some of these raspberries over here. And going over to these raspberries kind of makes me think back again to the uh, African horn melon and why I don't even like growing them. Because when it comes to plants, like sometimes you'll get plants that are super spiky, like these raspberries, but the fruit on them is sweet. So it's fine dealing with the spikes because you get that sweet fruit. Or even roses. Roses are super thorny, but they've got the beautiful flower. So you feel like you get something out of it. When it comes to that African horn melon, it's so spiky and the fruit is sour, it just I don't know, it almost leaves a sour you know, taste in my mouth and just, I don't know, you don't get the good contrast. So let me grab some of these yellow and raspberries real quick and pop them in my mouth. Definitely my favorite raspberry. I removed almost all the raspberries from the garden besides these yellow ants. And these are ever bearing raspberries. So if you remember early in the spring, we were eating these delicious raspberries and we're getting them again. Let me show you right over here. This was one of the plants that actually finished because we had harvested them in the spring and then again in the fall. So if you want, you could take all these raspberries in the winter and cut them completely to the ground. This way you'll get one huge fall harvest or you could allow them to grow over the winter so you get this early harvest at the top, this late out harvest at the top right here as a fall raspberry and then in the spring they'll fruit along the sides so you get that double harvest that's why we call them the everberry so you can choose if you just get the double harvest or the single fall one some people go for the single fall one because it's a bigger harvest but i choose to go for both because some some years the uh the fruit flies are so bad that they attack late in the fall like this so i like to make sure i'm at least getting a good harvest in the spring that's today's video growers thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it i hope you got something out of it I hope you take the chance to grow some rare stuff too, and maybe not that African horn melon. But again, that was that's my own opinion. 
but I just don't think it's a good idea for some of us small gardeners who just don't have the space. I don't think it's worth the space, the time, or even the effort. I'd rather grow some of the some of the cucumbers, like I mentioned, the lemon cuke or the crystal apple cucumber, things like that. I just wanted to thank everyone for the continued support. I know we're getting into fall, and for some people, the growing season is like dying down, but we're still gonna be pushing it as far as we possibly can. We've got a lot of cold hardy stuff. We've got our hoop houses that we have to put on, and I've got plenty of other ideas. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. And remember, whenever you're on Amazon, start your shopping with our Amazon affiliate link. Doesn't cost you anything, it helps us out just a little bit. Me and Doc will be back to you again real soon. We 